You can't make this stuff up. Look, we all recall when presidents faced national security threats with strength and resolve. That seems like ancient history. Right now, our commander-in-chief is not in command. The free world deserves better than a dithering and diminished leader. Dear God, it was like some ancient witch started to take over her soul as that went on. Whew, okay, that's Katie Britt giving the official response to the State of the Union. And as you could, I'm thinking, clearly tell from that video, she was chosen for a couple of reasons. One, she's a big up and comer in the party with vice presidential aspirations. And two, she can go from folksy smile to boring a hole through your skull with her eyes in about two to three <laughs> seconds. But anyway, there's more, including way more different emotional states. Take a look. I never could have imagined what my story would entail. To think about what the American dream can do. Mr. President, enough is enough. Innocent Americans are dying and you only have yourself to blame. It's been a minute since Joe Biden pumped gas, uh, ran a carpool, or even pushed a grocery cart. We hear you and we stand with you. I know, you're frustrated. <laughs> look, um, look, there's a lot going on there. And honestly, I'm gonna say that watching that, I, I don't think I should do that. I have the weird lib thing where I naturally try to empathize with the people that I see. And I have a sort of mirroring of their emotions. And that is just too much of a roller coaster ride. Why is she winking? Why is she talking like this all of a sudden? Why are you standing with me so weirdly close to me? Look, there, there's clearly a lot going on <laughs> and I'm not a huge fan, although it was fun, I guess, for a while. Republicans also not huge fans and we're gonna get to some of their criticism of that rebuttal. But first, Francesca, I saw some of your like live reaction to it with your husband <laughs> on Instagram. Yes. What do you make yes. of it now with a little bit of time? You know, A lot of mainstream media don't give you honest news. We do, you know why? Because of you. Paid membership on YouTube makes all the difference. Hit the join button below and you become the hero that sustains us. Mm, it doesn't age well upon third viewing. It is still just as what are you trying to do? Who is this for? Why are you in a kitchen that doesn't feel like a real kitchen? Um, like again, I don't know if she is trying to um, break off from the Moms for Liberty group and start a new group. I don't know if she's actually a sitting senator. I don't know if she is like, doing an, an acting course and this is her very first monologue and she's <laughs> trying to crush it like there are a million things but like this like very fragile state of I'm about to cry I'm about to laugh but mostly I'm psychotic and this is my parking space like this is <laughs> the most to quote Dr. Ritchie the Karenicity on the brink of a breakdown that I've seen and I, I guess that's what you want out of a political party it looked like a commercial for an antidepressant medication. 100%. Um, right? Like, you know, are you feeling, you know, uh, uh, traumatized and, and desperate and alone and you don't know what to do? Mr. President, <laughs> I want you to help me. I'm going to take my pills and feel better or whatever the pill is. Um, don't they audition these people? Like, yeah. this is the, this was your chance to put your, Bulldog, your pit bulls, your Marjorie Taylor Greens, your Lauren Bobers, your Jim Jordans, who are just as nutty. This is your chance to put one of those screamers mm -hmm. in front of the <laughs> in front of the audience and just have them scream and be like, you know, at least you'd be like, you know, at least Republicans would be like, that's what I'm talking about. Versus this poor lady. I mean, it's just, it was so bad. It was sad. And by the way, if you look at all the policies and all these things that they blame him for, all you got to do. If, if they come at you with any of this stuff, all you gotta do is go, look, there was a border bill that you guys tanked. So yeah. you're talking about all this stuff, you tanked the border bill. So don't be blaming Joe when you weren't able to pass something that was gonna solve 90% yeah. of these problems that you're talking about, or at least start to solve these problems. So um, yeah, even on, the, even on the actual policies, it was Definitely. totally empty. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. And you said, you know, don't they audition people? What I was wondering is like, I just imagine her like she's she's prepped at home. She sits down. She's like, should we do a run through? And like the stage manager's like, no, you got it, whatever. Like, no, you gotta do a run through, like, or have someone in your ears, like. This is all super weird, all the stuff you're doing. Could you please stop doing, you're making Mark Zuckerberg look like a human, okay? Like just imitate people you've seen on TV. And look, I said that we're gonna get to the, the Republican reactions and we are. But before we do that, I wanna show you one more video. This is not from her rebuttal. This is like a social media clip to promote her rebuttal. And I want you to take a look at the stark difference in this. Hey y'all, Katie Britt here. I am looking forward to delivering the Republican response to the State of the Union. So tune in, see you soon. That's a human in that video. That is a person who's just talking. She's not wildly swinging from one extreme to the other. She's not like desperately trying to give some sort of weird version of gravitas or seriousness about the border. She's just talking like a person and deep down inside, I'm sure there is a person, but unfortunately, she has ambitions and she has aspirations and this is what the political system does to people. It turns them into these bizarre robots. So anyway, look, we're, we've all been critical, but it's not just us. Charlie Kirk said, I'm sure she's a sweet mom in person, but this speech is not what we need. Joe Biden just declared war on the American right and Katie Britt is talking like she's hosting a cooking show, whispering about how Democrats don't get it. There were a lot of anonymous responses uh, reaching out to different news sites. Um, one Trump advisor said, what the hell am I watching right now? Creepy, a Republican pollster said. <laughs> One lawyer working in the Trump orbit said that the performance reminded them of public access television. A senior House congressional aide on the Republican side remarked that it was cringe inducing and likely destined to be turned into a lame SNL skit. I just want to know who is going to be playing her on that. I, or can they beat her? Like, can who can it do might, it, it better than she can? It might not be possible, it might not. One Republican staffer said it gives a high school freshman speech. She really yep. thinks she's killing it, but it's comical, like SNL quality. First of all, people love to just <laughs> crap all over SNL. Some of the skits are good. Anyway, radio host Jesse Kelly wrote that it's not what he'd prefer out of the GOP response. Quote, but there's no question Katie Britt has mastered the ultimate weapon of dimes everywhere. The fake cry, that's a seasoned pro right there. So. That's not great either as a take, but there was one person who liked it, or at least is pretending to like it on social media. He said online, Katie Britt was a great contrast to a capital A angry and obviously very disturbed president. She was compassionate and caring, especially concerning women and women's issues. Her conversation on migrant crime was powerful and insightful. Great job, Katie. And it's pretty clear from that why she was chosen or what her mission was supposed to be. Bearing in mind that Donald Trump wanted to be the one to give the rebuttal himself. They, they said not to have that, they're putting her in instead. She's under consideration to be VP. They clearly think that they can like win over women or something. And some of them are not even as nuanced in talking about that mission as Donald Trump. Tommy Tuberville said, like he was a little bit critical of it, but he said she wasn't really there to be a senator. She was there to be a mom, like a housewife or whatever. So that's what she's doing. She's a senator. She's been a lawyer for years and years. She was a comms director for the previous senator. She's not a housewife. Housewives are real things. You could have a housewife if you wanted them to deliver the rebuttal. She is a professional working woman who's worked for many, many years. So either he knows that, in which case he knows that the mission is for her to like cosplay being a housewife or something, or he doesn't know that and screw her many years of both public service and private service. She's always just gonna be a housewife to him and to the other Republicans. I don't know exactly which it is, Francesca, what do you think? Well, I mean, that's the irony of the entire thing is that she herself, I mean, she's part of where she's going to be delivering this rebuttal and she was in, I guess, her kitchen. It kind of seemed like a set, but she was there. I mean, that was a choice to say, um, I just look like a regular old lady who's selling you or or mom who's, yeah, selling you some antacids, you know? And, you know, for your problem of border migrants, you know, like coming across and like she said the word rape like five times in the first five minutes. Like it's just ridiculous. So, so again, Again, like, and this is my broader point about Republican women in this party, that even though she is an accomplished senator, I guess in her own right, 
that part of her selling the Republican Party is selling the second class citizenship or the sort of housebound housewife identity of women. She's from Alabama at the same time that Alabama lawmakers are taking away the right to have a family via IVF yeah. because the right of a zygote is more important, right? She didn't talk anything about that. So speaking of, you know, talking about the crime on the border, what about the crimes being committed against women in this very country? So we'll see if this is enough to get suburban women, a lot of whom are losing the thread on the, the Republicans because of abortion rights. But, but it's just, again, it is, it's a pretty sick way yeah. to sell this case to women. Yeah, I would say, you know, um, John, the clip you showed of her promoting the upcoming rebuttal. Based on that, if I were coaching her, I would say, listen, let's not, because it looks like she was probably reading from a teleprompter, mm -hmm. and that makes you even more nervous, and she's got to hit everything. And they, she might even had in parentheses, like, cry, smile. You know, there might have been, it might have been that, that etched out. And if I were directing her, I'd say, listen, let's just do bullet points. <laughs> hit the point, move on to the next bullet point, hit the point, because it was just they, they, they put her out there to really fail. And uh, to Francesca's point with uh, women in the Republican Party and they're trying to win over women by saying, oh, look, a woman gave our rebuttal. The truth is, you know, I, I was looking at Nikki Haley not being uh, chosen to be the nominee on the Republican side. Yes, number one, she was battling MAGA and Trump. But number two, and I think just as important, if not maybe more important, is MAGA Republicans and maybe Republicans in general would never vote for a woman to be president. So you might sit there and put as many women as you want to do the rebuttals, but they see you as a second class citizen. They're not gonna accept you. You're not a leader. Yeah. You need to be in the kitchen. You're a housewife. The same way they try to play with people of color when Donald Trump photoshops black people around him, they would never vote for a black person to be their nominee. It's not gonna happen, it ain't gonna happen. And so you can do as much as you want to say, "Oh, we welcome everybody, but they don't and they won't. And if you're a sucker, you're enough of a sucker to vote for them, then you yeah. lose. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and look, look the idea that if you want to be an elected Republican, as you know, a lot of different people of different sorts want to be, but unfortunately, there's not a lot of different Republican parties. There's one, and it's misogynistic and racist and Islamophobic and homophobic and all of those things. But some people who are part of those groups that most Republicans have no respect for are conservative. So they're put in this really uncomfortable situation, and I have some empathy for that situation. But Katie Britt is obviously a willing tool in continuing all of those hierarchies, not only in being a senator or giving the rebuttal. She wants to be Trump's VP, never forget that. And that's where I'm gonna set aside the jokes for just a second because it's easy to make fun of her and it feels good and I'm glad that we did it. But she's also a <laughs> senator and a yeah. truly horrible, dishonest person. And that's where the stuff that she said in that gets kind of serious because she went on at length about human traffickers raping women. And she mm -hmm. said all of that to attack Joe Biden. She went on at length about gang rapes of women and how horrific it is. So that Joe Biden would lose to the guy she wants to win, Donald Trump, who a judge found was a rapist. Okay, so she loves to use the idea of rape as a political weapon as she is supporting a rapist for office. And by the way, I want to I want to just mention something that I saw Shannon Watts mention on Twitter, which is in that absolutely horrific example that you gave, Katie Britt, of a woman being gang raped by human traffickers, an unthinkable tragedy. Let's say she gets pregnant during that. What should happen to her, Katie Britt? I think we all know what you think should happen. She should raise the baby of one of those rapists for literally decades. That's what you think should happen. And small fact check, Francesca, you mentioned that she didn't mention IVF. In her speech, she did briefly mention IVF, IVF and she said that they would support it. But I had, when I heard that, I had just listened to Joe Biden's speech. And when he mentioned them enshrining IVF rights, no Republican clapped, no Republican right. stood up. And it was just a few days ago that they shot down a chance to actually do that. The thing that she's giving a speech about, 
They did not do in the Senate, and I don't remember her doing a whole round of appearances in the media about how that was utterly unacceptable. And there's a reason for that because she believes that life begins at fertilization. For political purposes, she is pretending to support IVF, but it fundamentally goes against her actual ideology. And finally, as Maz pointed out, most of that speech was demonizing about the border. And many, many Republicans have been utterly hypocritical about the border, claiming it's an invasion and a crisis on the one hand, while helping to kill it on the other hand. But she is arguably worse than most of them because she had a direct hand in writing the bill, thinking this is great, we're gonna do this, it's a crisis down there. Oh, Donald Trump doesn't want this, well screw the whole thing. But I'm Amazing. still gonna talk about the border as if I think it's some sort of big deal, not a deal we need to do anything about for the next year or so. So look, look, was she emotional and weird and strange and breathy and it's ASMR? Yes, 100%, but she is just as bad as all the rest of them on policy, arguably worse than some. Final thoughts? No, I will just say that I think on the border bill, I am not in favor of what I think is ultimately a right wing bill. And as you as you pointed out, sponsored and supported by Republicans itself, because ultimately the way to actually protect people from being trafficked is to have border policies that put human beings first and not enforce and 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 come down on on them and treat them like criminals, which they yeah. are not by and large are not. Otherwise, you will inevitably lead to coyote trafficking, human trafficking, and on and on yeah. and on, which actually happens within this country as well. So that's the, the last point I want to put on. But but I think that's really important to remember. Let yeah, she was <laughs> she helped write this bill. Yeah, and I'll and I'll piggyback on that by saying, as much as we laugh and have fun with her performance, these people make you laugh because they're so ridiculous, but they're also dangerous. It's yeah. the same thing with a lot of Trump stuff. You watch yeah, him and true. he's mumbling stuff up and jumbling stuff up. They're actually dangerous people who are supported by a far right wing agenda that wants to take away women's rights, LGBTQ rights, uh, uh, people of color's rights, immigrant rights. They're, they're really, I mean, they do want a handmaid's tale. And so beyond laughing at them, we really got to wake up and fight them yeah. in the elections. We got to fight them in the courts and make sure that our rights are not taken away.